Inside Gaming is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Why haven't you gotten a VPN yet? Visit expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Wednesday. It's, it's hump day. day. <laughs> it's hump day guys. Just in time whoa. to talk. Oh, whoa. I'm on a pendulum. Wow, you're really it's got some movement into that. You know, half of California is powered by Patrick's humping. It's just in time to talk about everyone's favorite hump buddy. Interesting. Phil Spencer. Well, maybe he's just Autumn's favorite hump buddy. All right, Brian <laughs> was writing this thirsty <laughs> Phil Spencer. I was thinking of you the whole time. Time, though. <laughs> Ew. Oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah. He's the cool dad who would absolutely hump you. What? <laughs> That's not cool. Oh, that's that's not the cool. opposite of a cool Whoa. dad. <laughs> he would hump you if you pre ordered an Xbox Series X, because uh, he's a company man, baby. Employee of the month every month. Only if you ask, only if you ask, is this libel or slander? Which one's written? <laughs> no. It's sexy. Libel, slander is spoken. So this ah. is slander. Anyway, Phil Spencer's been all over the news lately, all around town, talking about how awesome Microsoft's new console is going to be once it releases the this holiday season. Sony has looked on quietly, possibly because they're not worried. Also possibly because they're shitting bricks worrying about losing the next gen. We won't know for sure until they spill really any beans about their product. No beans I, so far. No beans, they're sans beans. <laughs> bean wise, bean drought. big bean drought. Bean Playing wise, their beans sans. close to the chest. Spencer hasn't just been hyping up Microsoft's fridge looking new horrifying nightmare offspring. Doesn't look like a nightmare. I, I like that. You, it, you, you dream of obelisks and wake up in a That's cold true. sweat. What is your purpose? Cosmic knowledge forced upon me. Why were you sent here? So he's also been talking a lot about the brave new cloud gaming world that is on the horizon. Hark! A cloud! It's shaped like a dollar sign. Oh, uh, that one looks what like is a, that? a golden retriever. He's even got, well, Brian, you haven't said anything yet. Care to chip in? I was just looking. It looks like two of those clouds are having sex, baby. Oh. Oh. Philly Spencer has gone even so far as to say that Microsoft doesn't consider Sony and Nintendo to be their true competitors because they have invested bazillions of dollars in cloud computing infrastructure. So they're just small potatoes. They're just toy companies. He's gunning for the big boys like Amazon and Google when it comes to streaming games on the internet. And so far, judging by Project X Cloud's very successful beta, maybe he's right to be operating on a future forward Galaxy brain level. Yeah, Stadia, that's big competition right now for everyone. Yeah, but at the same time, it's left some questions out there. Like, is the Xbox Series X gonna be Microsoft's last console before they go streaming only? How do they feel about local hardware if they don't consider Sony to be their true competition? They're not even on the same plane of existence. They tire of these people. They're gonna live on Mars. That's Watchmen. I'm watching, this. Oh. I'm watching the series. Brian, it's, do you like Watchmen? I read the graphic novel because I'm a reader, but no, I haven't watched the show. You mean you don't like to watch men put their nuts in your mouth? That was only okay. It was okay, <laughs> I'm yeah. not acknowledging that. That was a weak one. You know, the battle isn't won in, in, in one day. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so tense. Can you massage me? No. Well, our sweet boy Phil clarified some of that in a wide-ranging interview he did recently. Man, that guy can't stop giving interviews. He it's loves like to... it's his job. Well, he loves to talk. <laughs> we love to listen to those dulcet tones. All right, this time Phil yes showed up on the Game Maker's Notebook podcast, hosted by Insomniac Game CEO Ted Price. Wait, didn't Sony buy Insomniac? Why is Ted talking to the enemy? Judas, please, for how much silver? Cool Bible reference. Anyway, it's worth a listen. They got into a lot of interesting stuff, right, Brian? Yeah, Spencer gave us thoughts about where the console business is heading. Also, Phil Spencer, come on our podcast, dude. Like, yeah. we got one starting yeah. up. Yeah, if you're still wondering, Phil Spencer still loves him some consoles. He doesn't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. He's the true gamer's gamer. Uh, yeah, he was asked if Cloud Wars are going to replace console wars in the future with all the new and emerging cloud services on the horizon from Google, NVIDIA, and Microsoft. Spencer said that he hopes that's not the case. He added, I think I'm going to have a game console plugged into my television for the next decade plus. I think the best way for me to play on my television is going to be having a device that downloads the games I want to play, but sometimes I'm not going to be in front of my television. Sometimes I'm not in front of a device that has the native capability to play. That's our bet on the cloud. Ooh, yeah. I, I would love to watch the big game at Phil's house. Yeah. I had a dream last night that Alanis Morissette gave me her phone number. Did you call her or did you wake up? I just couldn't believe it was real. It turned out it wasn't. That's not true, Brian. You had a dream that you could suck your own <laughs> Yeah, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he said he views cloud gaming as complementary to the traditional way of playing a game on your couch or PC. He added, one of the things that's always bummed me out about consoles is I usually have one TV in my house that a console is plugged into. The idea that I can't go to any TV in my house and sit down and play the games I wanna play, we should have that ability. He compared the future of games to music services like Spotify, where there are multiple devices that you can play video games on. He added, streaming services have liberated that content to all the media devices around me. I now have way more devices than ever to watch TV. It hasn't less 
than the number of devices, it actually increased it. I have Spotify in my ear. I have Spotify in my pocket. I have the ability to go connect to my music services across many devices. I have Spotify in my teeth. It's speaking to me. It's telling me to kill everyone. Of course, streaming a game is a lot more complicated than streaming a song, which is why it's taken so long for true cloud gaming to become a reality. Music players like Spotify don't have to worry about things like player inputs and latency issues. Not the way I listen to music. Patrick is a latent dancer. It goes like doo -doo -doo. But Spencer and others are still bullish on the future of cloud gaming. Like who? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But first, yes, dear gamers, you've heard it here first. We have two ads on today's show. We're veritably rolling in debt bread, and you could be veritably rolling in Logitech G products. Ooh. Now, excuse me, I'm gonna go secure the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by the Logitech G915 Lightspeed Wireless RGB Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. I know that's a mouthful, but this thing rules. So I just built my first PC and I was like, I don't need a keyboard that's anything fancy. So I got something for like 30 bucks. It lights up only red and even that seemed like too much. Well folks, I'm a big dumb idiot who is wrong because this owns. The G915 is the most advanced gaming keyboard ever made. Logitech G has combined sophisticated design, cutting edge technologies, and breakthrough engineering to bring you the ultimate wireless gaming keyboard. I mean, like, look at this thing. It's got this brushed metal. It's extremely weighty. It feels like a premium product because it is. The Logitech G915 is a new class of mechanical gaming keyboard featuring breakthrough light speed wireless technology. So that's a super fast one millisecond report rate. Light speed wireless makes issues like lag time a thing of the past, which gaming on a wireless keyboard, you would think would be a problem. Not anymore. So the G915 is also engineered with LightSync, Logitech G's amazing next-gen RGB lighting. With LightSync, you can customize the colors or even every key and synchronize your keyboard lighting to match the action in games, music, videos. It can mirror your screen if you take a sample. It also has new high-performance mechanical gaming switches. The low-profile keys give you supreme gaming speed and accuracy, and it's half the height of traditional switches, so there's not too much key travel. That means smoother, more comfortable key presses from your opening attack to victory. Maybe a battle royale for all you Fortnite players out there. It's premium quality inside and out. It's super thin. It's got this beautiful aluminum alloy top plate, as I referenced. Super durable keys. It's got refined media controls that actually work and pause something you're listening to. Customizable G keys to execute complex actions with a single keystroke. And the rechargeable battery powers you through even the longest gaming sessions with 30 hours of nonstop battery life with a quick three hour charge. I mean, that's amazing. This is a great keyboard for doing what we do, for video editing. So for a limited time, Logitech G is offering our viewers, 10% off any of their products at logitechg.com. Use code INSIDE for 10% off today. That's 10% off all Logitech G products with promo code INSIDE. So who else in the games industry has been hot on this idea of a big cloud gaming future? Ouch. Well, you might remember a couple of years ago, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimot made observations similar to Spencer's when he said, I think streaming will become more accessible to many players and make it not necessary to have big hardware at home. There will be one more console generation, and then after that, we will be streaming. All of us. We will all be in the cloud. <laughs> So this isn't just Big Phil talking about this, right, Brian? No, lots of others in the gaming industry have seen the handwriting on the wall, and there's been lots of articles written about how much money there is to be made in video games. It's huge. It's bigger than the movie industry. It's bigger than music, which is why we're seeing big players like Google, Facebook, and Amazon jump into the space. Yeah, Amazon hasn't announced a streaming service, but they have been pouring a lot of money into making new games, and some people think it's just a matter of time before they roll out their own cloud service. Spencer said that he hopes cloud gaming will ultimately promote developers to be more creative in the way they make games, saying, my ability to throw that content from my main console or from the cloud to all the TVs in my house is something that I think we should have. That helps us in terms of families playing together and new creative scenarios. More Pokemon Go games for everyone. We're all gonna play together. Yay. Hey, it's just what we need. But we're being serious, actually. Those first two weeks when Pokemon Go came out were practically world peace. I smiled at, and I talked to, and I cooperated with multiple strangers on the street. That's up. Except for those guys who would like lure people to the places oh, yeah. to mug them. Yeah, Spencer also talked about possible new business models in the industry, and that's when it started to feel a tad bit microtransaction and gross, right, Brian? Yeah, it was really gross. I don't know. We think Phil Spencer's like this cool dad, but then it turns out he's a dad who still wants to make money off his kids, like one of those Hollywood parents. So he also said that they don't think at Xbox that there's necessarily one business model to rule them all. He added, we actually think it's healthy, not only for our industry from a monetization 
execution standpoint, but also from a creative standpoint, if multiple business models will work. I think for us as an industry, we should embrace monetization dexterity because I think it leads to the best creativity. I like how he slipped into like boardroom speak there for a second. As an example, he talked about a recent trip he took to Africa where in some buses or taxis, you have to watch an advertisement to get five minutes of internet time. And Phil seemed to like that idea, saying it's a model that absolutely could work in video games. He said, I don't know if it's gonna completely mirror the business models that we have today. It's not necessarily free to play. It's not necessarily ad funded. It's something different. A little gross. I mean, it's extremely gross, but Microsoft is gonna Microsoft. We just hope they don't start popping the unskippable ads in the Xbox home screen. Spencer did add though that developers should be cautious about trying to find new ways to monetize existing gamers. He even called it dangerous. Instead, he said the goal should be to attract new players, you know, like the Gen X moms who are almost happy to be bled dry by Farmville. He added, I think we need to find new players and new forms of monetization to open up those new player bases and new ways to build games, new creativity, and that's a great path to growth. And that's an admirable goal, trying to grow the overall pie and attract new gamers, not how pie works. Say what you will about mobile gaming, but it did add a lot of casual gamers to the market, looking at you, mom. But then again, it also pioneered a bunch of scummy new monetization tactics that have trickled into mainstream gaming. Looking at you, sports bros that are just out money into EA's big greedy mouth. Mobile gaming like wrote the book on horrible monetization tactics. Oh my tactics. god, yeah. So all in all, from Spencer's point of view, he seems to believe that the old school model of console gaming isn't going anywhere, at least anytime soon. Yeah, Brian, what's the future look like? Well, it's clear that cloud gaming still in its earliest stages, especially if you're Stadia, but while Google's making a big bet on it, Microsoft's clearly trying to do both, roll out its own cloud gaming platform while also releasing a robust new console in the Xbox Series X. 12 teraflops, baby. Nice some floppy. Oh, I gotta have my flops. Yeah, you're not going to sink that much money into research and development, not to mention marketing and production if you think that console gaming is dead. Could be that this is a transitional generation where some people remain on consoles and others shift over to cloud gaming. Spencer seems to think that we're moving to a more device agnostic future though, saying, I think that getting to a world where you don't have to own one device to play specific games helps the industry. Others have said that going forward, the future will be about getting people on your ecosystem, not necessarily your hardware. And yeah. Microsoft, more than any other game, gaming company has shown a willingness lately to embrace that. Oh, maybe one day Phil Spencer will show a willingness to embrace me. I'll be here, Phil. Ready? I'm waiting for you. Take Love me it. to the game zone. Uh -huh. Do you guys have SSDs on your computers? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you not? Yeah. Please. <laughs> You're about to have SSDs nuts in your mouth. Oh!